Good day, fine people. It is Bridget here from Bridget's Kitchen wishing you a very happy Thursday. Maybe it's Wednesday, but wishing you a very happy day today. I am just in my kitchen thinking about dinner and I started thinking about you guys as well and thought I would share my top tips on how to cook fish and the fish in particular that I'm going to cook today is actually salmon but the reason I thought it would be really cool to do a little video um, with you all is because we need to eat more fish and I know for a lot of people they don't hi to Tracy hi <laughs> how are you my love good to see you here um, we don't eat enough fish really and when I speak to people about why they think that is that they don't get as much fish into their diet as they should because it's incredibly good for us it's really easy for our body to digest as well because it's really soft and the flesh gets digested really easily it doesn't have to work too hard on it so it's really good for the for the gut for your gut health and for digestion but the other thing about fish and especially if we're talking about something like salmon it's got some really good healthy fats in there as well so you know we need to have more fish in our diet but I reckon the reason that we don't and this is what I hear from a lot of people as well that come to my cooking classes or we talk online hi Julie nice to see you that talk online you know and they say to me the reason they don't eat as much fish as what they should be is because they find it really difficult to cook they either make it way too dry is what happens or it is so dry that it just tastes terrible so I'm gonna give you guys and hi to Carrie as well thank you oh thank you for loving my recipes <laughs> I love giving them to you guys because it excites me to know that you're enjoying them so much so please keep letting me know how much you're enjoying them hello to Carol as well they all killed Anna from Rarotonga good to see you so um, I thought fish today would be a really good one because like it's coming it's coming close to dinner time here in Sydney and um, hubby's getting a bit hungry so um, I thought yep I've got a couple pieces of salmon in the fridge I'm gonna cook them up for him but I'm also gonna give you guys a really quick cooking class on how to cook fish and why there's, there's a little bit of there's not much technique but if you kind of kind of got the basics you're gonna be able to nail it every single time so what I thought I would do today is as I was saying I got a couple pieces of salmon here and the salmon that I have the fillets is about 125 grams which is ideal absolutely ideal for one portion that's a good size portion of salmon and you will also notice that I've got the skin that I've kept on I love salmon skin there's so much goodness under that skin don't take the skin off if you can buy your salmon fillet with the skin attached it's gonna be heaps yummier for you as well and Tracy's just um, saying how she enjoyed the salmon we cooked in the wood-fired oven yeah she came for dinner and I did I did this in the wood-fired oven it was unbelievable put it onto a plank and put it in the oven uh, in the wood-fired oven it was incredible but we're not gonna get that quite that technical today we're gonna keep it really simple so I've got my two pieces of salmon here I'm gonna bring you guys down to the bench so you can have a little bit of a look at what I'm doing so I've got my two pieces of salmon here so I'm gonna give you guys I'm gonna give you guys two separate ways that you can actually cook your salmon or your white fish it does not have to be salmon you can do exactly the same method with a piece of you know snapper or a piece of gurnard I'm, I'm speaking in New Zealand terms here aren't I or some cod or uh, what else have we got some um, perch whatever it is that you're cooking and um, whether it be salmon or it be white fish the same techniques can apply so um if you can obviously get this we were saying get this get the skin on there it's it's absolutely fabulous with the skin on but you don't have to if you can't actually find salmon with the skin on so or fish with the skin on in fact so um, we're going to do the two methods and the first method that I'm going to show you guys is so simple and so incredibly delicious and if anyone um, can guess what that is yep you know it that's my sticky sauce the quickest and the easiest way for you to cook up your piece of fish is to get some of get some of my sticky sauce and just literally dribble it on the flesh side dribble it on the flesh side I can now rub it in just there with the uh, with my spoon it's as simple as that doesn't need any salt because there's um, there is a saltiness obviously to the sticky sauce because it's made from um, from tamari so I don't have to add any salt I will add just a little bit of black pepper to this one and that is just gonna sit there 
that's literally how I'm gonna prepare it. Don't need to do anything else to it. That sticky sauce is gonna make it literally sticky, which is fabulous. So the, ne the next piece, what I'd like to do, because I'm gonna put them all into the oven at the same time. The next piece, we're actually gonna wrap in a little bit of baking paper. So um, you may have seen or done, even in the past yourself, um, fish that's wrapped in foil. Now, I never, ever, ever wrap any of my delicate fish in foil because the foil gets too hot and it holds in too much heat because it's an insulator. And fish does not need a lot of heat in order for it to cook through. In fact, the lighter the cooking, the better. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to set um, I'm going to um, set this into baking paper because it's nowhere near as hot and the fish is going to cook tender fish in here as opposed to tin foil which will just hold on too much heat and all chances are it might overcook it. So throw out the tin foil, don't throw it out, just don't use tin foil on your fish. We're going to use baking paper. So non-stick baking paper, I've put the uh, skin side down there because now that gives me the ability to add flavour to the top. I'm not going to do a sticky sauce one because I've already done one. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to grind over some of that wonderful black pepper. I'm also going to sprinkle it with salt because it does need a little bit of seasoning this time because we're not adding any sticky here. You notice I haven't put any other um, liquid or anything in here. I don't have to spray it with oil or anything crazy. It is literally salt and pepper on there. But let's then add a little bit of citrus because of course citrus and salmon <laughs> go really well together or fish in general. So when it comes to um, the juicing of your lemon, because we just need a bit of juice, if you've got a really firm lemon, here's a little trick for you. Put your lemon onto the bench and then just roll it and push it out at the same time. What's going to happen is it's going to break up um, the fibres that are in there. It's going to make it heaps easier to juice when it's time to juice it. So give it a bit of a rub, a tender loving rub, you know, not a hardcore one. And then we're going to take some of this and just squeeze it over. You already know that's going to be fabulous, right? Because now we've just got some wonderful citrus happening on our salmon, which is really, really good. And then if you wanted to, you could, um, you could add in a little bit of herbs, fresh herbs, of course, fresh herbs are always going to taste better. But if you can't, you can't get hold of fresh herbs, then look, you can use, um, you can use dried, but I would probably, you know, just as me personally, when it comes to seafood, if I don't have any fresh herbs, I won't add any at all. I think probably it's best because Seafood is so delicate and so light, you really want to accentuate the flavours with fresh herbs as opposed to dried herbs, which just don't quite have that vibrancy that fresh herbs do. So if, I, if you don't have any fresh here, just leave it out, you don't have to do this. And what I've done is I've just taken the, that's just the stalks of the coriander, because there's lovely flavour in there. And I'm just going to, oh, I've got a really blunt knife, I haven't used this one for a while. Oh goodness me. Ugh. I should have given it a bit of a, a bit of a going over with the steel before I started the video. Alright, I'm just sprinkling over the um, not so finely chopped um, stalks of my coriander onto there. Uh, the reason I'm doing the stalks and not doing the leaves because with fresh herbs, I put them into the into the oven, the heat's going to, to, to make them wilt and they're not going to be very attractive. So I'm actually going to leave the fresh herbs or the leaves for when this is done. So we've got our piece of paper. We need to make a bit of a package, really easy to do. Bring up the two ends, like wrapping a Christmas present, fold it over and then fold it in. But you will notice that I'm doing it really loosely. It's not tight. That's a real loose little package of fish there. So now that that's done, I could pop it in the oven. But you know what else you can do, which is pretty cool? And it will definitely help with the flavour. As I'm going back to my um, to my partly squeezed lemon. And I'm just going to, with a really blunt knife. <laughs> oh, I'm just going to attempt without cutting myself. Because you know, actually, there's more chance of you cutting yourself with a blunt knife than there is with a sharp knife. Would you believe? This is, this is true. Because when you've got a blunt knife, you've got to, you've got to apply more pressure. And if you apply more pressure, the chance of that slipping and then causing you an injury is actually a lot higher. So there you go, a little factoid for you guys for today. So you could also do this, right? Put the lemon on there, gorgeous. Bring up the two ends. Remember, we're going to do it really loosely is important. Fold it under. If you worked at a fish and chip shop, you'd be real good at this. Or if you have wrapped presents and you like doing it, you'd be good at this too, but nice and loose. So now what we're going to do is... 
I have my air fryer here. But in saying that, if you do not have an air fryer, you can do these techniques in the oven as well. So when it comes to the air fryer, I have that set on 170 degrees, which is about, I think it's about 340 degrees Fahrenheit, give or take a few degrees there. And I've got that set and I've preheated that as well. So the noise that you can kind of hear going on is the air fryer already kind of kicking in and doing its thing. It needs to be hot when you put it in, but it only takes two minutes to heat up. If you do not have an air fryer, you can still do these both of these methods that I'm showing you today. But what you need to do with your oven is you want to set it at 200 degrees, so a little bit higher. And you also, which is 400 degrees Fahrenheit, thereabouts, I'm not sure. Um, so 200 degrees. And you want to preheat your oven. And I'm not sure how long it takes you to preheat your oven, but you maybe need to put it on, you know, 15 to 10 to 15 minutes before you want to eat dinner. Air fryers takes two minutes to preheat. Nice and quick. You guys know I love the air fryer, right? So I'm gonna use it, but you can do these methods in the oven, absolutely. So, back to our air fryer. So I'm setting that there. There he is, hi. And it is set at 170 degrees, remember, which is 320 degrees Fahrenheit or something like that. And I am going to set the timer. And we'll set the timer, there we go. For seven minutes, seven minutes. So. All I need to do now is take my little package, and if you're having a dinner party, you have like the perfect packaged salmon, just ready to go, right? That's one, that's one person's portion of salmon, it's fantastic. Pop that in, it's going onto the rack in here by the way guys, so it is um, actually sitting on a rack. This one goes in as well. Oh, did you hear that sizzle? Oh god, I love the sizzle. I do. I love it. I love it. You know it's hot then, right? Okay, that's gonna go down. Oh, I've just got to, it's only on seven. Did I say seven or eight minutes? We'll start with seven, and I think if I need to add another minute, I will. But that is gonna be in there for seven minutes. So, the, one of the reasons that, as it's cooking, that it's cooking in seven minutes. Yay! <laughs> I mean, we've all got seven minutes, right? That's why I love, I love this so much. I love the start of cooking so much, because of course, you get really healthy in the process. But what is really amazing when it comes to the style of cooking is I, I actually have, I have 10 minutes to make dinner. You know, you could serve your salmon, and I think the way that I've got it in the cookbook in Bridget's Healthy Kitchen is I serve it in num fish a number of ways. What you'll find actually is that there's a lot of fish recipes in my cookbook because I know how good it is for us to eat. So there's a lot of recipes in there, and you can do it, do it on broccoli rice, which is a real popular one. And if you've never had broccoli rice, but you've done cauliflower rice, please, I beg you, especially if you're New Zealand and Australian, broccoli is actually pretty reasonably priced in Australia. And I'm not sure about New Zealand, but it's, it's pretty reasonably priced at the moment. Make, do exactly the same thing with cauliflower rice, but make broccoli rice, because broccoli rice is delicious. Bit of seasonings and fresh herbs chopped through it is literally absolutely fabulous. So please try it with broccoli rice. That's one way you can do it. I also do a salmon, and it was part of my meal plan, is I do a salmon with um, kombud broccolini. So you know I take the, 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 the thinner broccoli, broccoli, they're called broccolini, it's like a cousin of broccoli. Um, same type of nutritional benefits to us, it's also one of those vegetables that's really, really good for our gut health, so that's really cool. So when it comes to the broccolini, what you can actually do um, is to cook it very quickly in some kombu water. And of course, kombu water is in the cookbook. It's in the, in the cookbook. You can cook it in the kombu water really quickly. Broccolini takes a minute to cook. Heat your, heat your kombu water up, throw in your broccolini, let it cook away there, and then serve it with your freshly cooked salmon and a little bit of that kombu broth as a little, almost like a little mini soup down the bottom. That is in the cookbook too, that recipe, and it's a good one. And so there's so many different things you can do with your salmon. You could create the most beautiful big salad if you wanted to. I mean, there's options galore. You can do this on cauliflower mash if you wanted to as well. That would be fabulous. You could do it on my pickled cucumbers. You know my pickled, <gasps> have you guys tried my pickled cucumbers? They're so delicious. You could try it on the pickled cucumbers. Look at me, I'm salivating at the possibilities of what we can actually do with just a cup. This is very quickly cooked salmon. Our protein is done, right? It's in there, it's cooking perfectly. I've got it on that temperature. It's not gonna take very long. So it's just left for me to go, hmm, what could I possibly serve it with? And I've got lots and lots and lots of ideas, which is really exciting. So um, I'm gonna have a little bit of a peek because I'm, I'm nosy and I can't handle the suspense, right? I'm gonna have a little bit of a peek. Oh, it's starting to go late. 
So, back to the fish story. So when it comes to seafood, and I, like I was saying, I reckon this is one of the main reasons that we don't eat enough of it, is because we find, it, for a lot of people, and this is the feedback that I get from them, is they find it really difficult to cook because they tend to overcook it. So one of the reasons why it is easy to overcook fish is because, believe it or not, fish, and I'm talking whether it be a whole fish or a fish fillet or a white fish or an oily fish like salmon or tuna or whatever it is, fish does not need much heat in order to cook through. All it needs, would you believe, is 51 degrees internally and then that flesh is perfectly cooked. If you think about 51 degrees Celsius, that's basically a little bit cooler than some of the weather we get in Sydney in, in winter and definitely in Darwin in the Northern Territory. That's not much. 51 degrees centigrade is a very low temperature. So what I think tends to happen is that we think it needs to go in there for a long, long time and cook, you know, we cook the guts out of it pretty much. And as we're doing that, because fish is so tender and it's so delicate, we are removing all the moisture because we've just completely overcooked it. So it's one of the reasons why we can eat raw fish. So if you're a fan of, you know, eating a raw fish or a sushi or sashimi, so, you know, really raw thin slices of salmon and stuff, that is because it is delicious when it's still very moist and obviously we don't even need to apply heat. So when you are applying heat, we want to do it for as short a time as possible. So in fact, I always say, err on the side of caution. So rather than going, oh yeah, no, I'm just going to leave it in there, go, you know what, I'm going to look at it, like what I'm doing, keep looking, keep looking, I'm going to keep on looking at it, because I want to monitor it, because I don't want to overcook it. But I know that with this air fry and how it's set, we're looking at between the seven to eight minute range. And the reason I'm not giving you an exact range is because it depends on the size of your fillet, right? Some may take a bit longer, some may take less, but I always err on the side of caution because you can always add more heat. So if you take it out and you go, oh look, that's just not cooked at all, just put it back in for a couple more minutes, right? But if you're leaving it and you think, I've got to cook it, I've got to make it done, and then you find out it's overcooked, you can't take that back. So err on the side of caution, most, most definitely, because you can always add more heat if you need to. So um, we're now down, we've done five minutes in there, which is looking pretty good. If anyone has got, um, I did see a question about air fryers. Now the air fryer that I use, and I am brand agnostic when it comes to air fryers, I'm not gonna say you must buy this one, you must buy that one. This is what works for me in my house. Now I have a very big household, lots of teenagers, so I need quite a decent size one. And the one that I have, which is here, this is a 10 litre air fryer, so I can fit, I can do a whole um, roast chicken, actually a rotisserie chicken in here. I can fit a whole chicken here, it is huge. The last one that I had before this was actually, I bought it from Kmart, I think it was $69, but it was a 3.7 litre one, so the capacity was a lot smaller than this, and I loved it to death, don't get me, and I did, I literally used it till I couldn't use it anymore because it was just too small, and I absolutely adored it. For 69 bucks, you really can't go wrong. It's really simple to use the Kmart one, and if you've got a smaller, you know, family of sort of two to four, or one to four, Go for it, absolutely. But if you've got a bigger family and you need to cook lots of food at the same time, or you like the idea of being able to throw a chicken in there and cook it because it's really, really quick, um, absolutely look at something bigger. Ooh, time is beeping. Let's have a little bit of a look. I've, I like this size, and we got this one from, we got it online from kogan.com.au, and it arrived within a couple of days. But I also know that catch.com.au, Australia of course, has the same type of one as well. But you know what? Do your research, go online, Google it, read the reviews, see what other people are buying, see what they're saying about it before you make your purchase decision, which is what I did basically to get this, and I'm really happy with it. It's not perfect. I'm talking, I should be looking at the fish, I know. It's not perfect because it's not as logical up here to use. So you now you turn it on, I'm gonna give the fish one more minute, this one playing around. You turn it on, and then you kind of gotta push buttons that are all over the place. And for me, I like it to be one click, you know, just like, oh, that's easy to work out. I've had this in my house now for probably three months, and I still go, oh, which button do I push now? So it's not as, I mean, you get, you get there eventually, don't get me wrong, it's not like you're just never gonna know how to use it. It's just a bit clunky, do you know what I mean, when it comes to this system here? Um, so, but, but in terms of the capacity, in terms of how well it cooks food, 
happy really 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 happy just would love this to be a little bit more easier to use just more logical but you know it does all the things that you need it to do and basically what you need it to do is you need it to cook your food really quickly and then you need to be able to clean it really easily so uh, that it completely nails nails all those things so um, I'm gonna have one more little look even though I just turned it on I just can't, I can't help myself it is look it is already feeling pretty good and I have to say, let's just take this out, right? Let's, let's look at it's looking awesome. Let's take her out. Her? Him? Hmm. I'm not sure. Ooh. All right. So, after seven minutes, <laughs> we have this already done. And one of the telltale signs when it comes to, especially cooking salmon, because salmon is what we know as an oily fish. And oily, not bad oils. This is really good for our brain health. This is really good for our gut health. This stuff is amazing. So. When I say oily, don't let that scare you away. Just know that this is gonna be lovely and succulent. One of the best ways to tell whether your fish is cooked, and it looks pretty good, right? It looks good, that was seven minutes, I know. Oh, let me just put this back in. That'll take a little bit longer, only because it's a package. So one of the best ways to tell, I'm gonna bring you down here, is what you need to do is grabbing yourself a fork, see if the flesh flakes away really easily. Oh! Can you see the moisture? Uh, can you? I'm not sure, the light's not good enough. Can you see the moisture in there? It is perfectly, perfectly cooked. So if it flakes away really easily, I'm just gonna even try it with my fingers now. Oh, do you see that? That is called flaking. So perfectly flaking. If it does that, your fish is cooked. This is perfectly cooked. So that was, yeah, seven minutes in the air fryer. A little bit of sticky sauce, can't get better than that and then of course you now have crispy little well-cooked skin under there as well so you get to eat that too yummy okay that's that one now let's have a look at our little package as I said the little package will take a little bit longer only because we've got a little package that it needs to get get done through as well so let, but let's have a little sneaky peek at what's happening with our little package I also suggest that you use tongs when you take food out of your air fryer, but chef for 30 years, these fingers, these fingers are fine. <laughs> they've, got, they've got natural calluses on the fingers. Ooh, this is so exciting. Oh my god. Oh wow. This is so different. Cooked for almost exactly the same time. I'm taking the lemon off. We don't need that now. It's done its job. Thank you, lemon. But can you see what's on there? Can you see it glistening for a start? And you can see all these sort of white gobules, that gobule, gobule, is that a word? No, well, you know what I'm talking about. The white stuff that comes out there, that is that wonderful natural oils that I'm talking about, right? Remember, it's an oily fish. But we've also got some liquid in our paper as well, but we haven't lost any of the moisture because our paper is there to lock that moisture in. So just by doing something as simple as creating a little package, you get to lock in moisture. But look at the, I mean, the two bits of salmon could not be more different, right? But they are both gonna taste phenomenal. Absolutely, look at that. Oh my gosh, let's do the test. Let's do the flake. We take our fork and we just see if we just, oh my God. Oh yeah, he breaks away lovely. Now let's try the finger. We'll see if we just get a lovely little break in there as well. Gorgeous. That is, once again, a perfectly cooked bit of fish. All you would do now, and I said to you before, we were, we were, talking, about doing, we were talking about doing fresh herbs, you know, on top of um, the fish as opposed to dried herbs. I, look, I'm not, I'm not opposed to dried herbs, but certain foods work really well with dried herbs. Like if you're doing a roast, there's nothing like a little bit of dried rosemary and thyme going in, in there as well. But when it comes to seafood, it really does benefit more from having freshness, from having that vitality. And when a herb is fresh, and the ones that I have here today, uh, a little bit of uh, coriander leaves. If you don't like coriander, please don't use it. You could also use mint, but I've got a little bit of coriander. And then I can just make almost like this little, cutie little little salad little herb salad on top which is just going to taste phenomenal when you cut into it and you've got all these really bright little vibrant herbs happening there it will be amazing so um yes i'm like i said i'm not opposed to dried herbs and i had someone ask me before whether they could use dried herbs if they can't get hold of fresh 
if you can't get hold of fresh, most definitely, just not with seafood, not with seafood. So we're going to add that, and we're also going to add, I've got some lovely, 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 fresh little baby basil leaves here, which you know is going to be amazing too. And what you have now created is literally a restaurant quality piece of fish. In fact, you may go to a restaurant and they may not cook it as well as you because you know how to do it perfectly now. Remember, we err on the side of caution. We err on the side of caution. Oh, you know what I just found? Look, I just found some more kami. I'm gonna stick some more kami on there too. You know what kami? Dried seaweed. Seaweed goes well with fish. It just, it's like a match made in heaven. And that's gonna help us to give us a little bit of a, a little bit of texture, because it's crunchy as you can hear, but also the most wonderful color, because we've just added a little bit of black to that. And then the flavor is going to be absolutely intense. So just like that, you have created restaurant quality fish looking gorgeous. You could do that at a dinner party. You could make that for yourself. You could take that to work the next day. And literally, that is, you, 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 are, you are chef when you create that. You are, look at that, I like that. I actually like that one. That's really cool. That's just gorgeous. You are chef. So there you go, guys. I hope you enjoyed this little video. I'm going to complete the dinner for Mahi now because he's, he's smelling the salmon cooking. So I better get busy. Um, hopefully you um, eat more fish, bring more fish into your life. Like seriously, get into it, do it. It's going to be worth it. Your body's going to love you for it. Um, you know, just if you can get into it, do it. Cook it easy. Air on the side of caution. Baking paper. Sprinkling of little, se little seasoning. Lovely fresh herbs. I mean, it's, it's just wonderful. All right, guys. Enjoy the rest of your evening if you're if you're coming into the evening or enjoy the rest of your day wherever you are around the world. Thank you so much for joining me. We'll see you again real soon. Take care. Bye.